Liquibase is a database DevOps solution that enables fully automated database change management and pipelines. With support for version control, CI CD automation, and rollback. In this video, we'll see how to use Liquibase with our Spring Boot apps. We'll see how to push database changes using Liquibase, track the incremental changes, and how to have Liquibase compare and generate the database incremental change script for us. I'm at the start.spring.io website. Let's choose Maven, name our artifact Liquibase, choose Java version 21, for dependencies, choose web, JPA, MySQL, and Liquibase. Click Generate and save the project. Here is a downloaded zip file. Let me unzip it. And here is the expanded content. I have IntelliJ open here. Click Open Project. Go to the folder where we unzipped it. Choose pom.xml, click open, open as project. And here is the project and its pom.xml file. We can see the dependencies here. Now let me go to the Java package folder, right click and choose new Java class, name is user, mark it as an entity, paste the attributes, integer ID, string name and string email. Let me right click, choose generate, getters and setters, select all fields and click OK. Go to source main resources. Since we chose Liquibase as a dependency, Spring created the db slash changelog folder under resources. Right click, New file name is db.changelog-master.yaml. This is the driving file for Liquibase. Again, right click on the folder, choose new file, name it as v1-schema.sql, our initial SQL file. Let me paste this line. You must include the comment hyphen hyphen Liquibase formatted SQL as the very first line of each SQL file. This special comment signals to Liquibase that the file contains structured metadata such as change sets and should be parsed accordingly. Next put hyphen hyphen change set and give it a name. Let me call it my change colon one. Typically the format is author colon the version number. This keyword change set tells Liquibase that a new change set begins here. A change set is the smallest unit of change that Liquibase tracks and manages. Next is my change. This is the author of the change set. It can be any string, but it's typically your username or initials and then one, which is the unique ID for the change set. Each change set by a given author should have a unique ID within the change log file. This is important because Liquibase stores information about each change set it has executed in a database table database change log. This prevents the same change set from running multiple times. You can specify rollback commands for each chain set. The author and ID help teams manage and merge database changes. And then next is the actual SQL or SQLs you want to execute as a part of the chain set. In my case, it's just a simple user table. Now let's go to the db changelog master.yaml file. Put database change log colon as the first line. Then using indentation, the keyword hyphen include and then in the next line again using indentation file colon the name of the file with the path it should run as a part of this. So our v hyphen schema.sql file. Next let me go to the application.properties file and paste a few lines here. Using spring data source URL I am pointing it to the MySQL database running at port 3306. The username password and driver for MySQL. With Spring JPA Hibernate DDL Auto None, we are asking Hibernate to not run SQL files automatically as you want Liquibase to control it. Next are the Liquibase properties, spring.liquibase.enable equal to true, and then Spring Liquibase changelog pointing to the db changelog master.yaml file. 
Now I have MySQL running in a Docker container and this is the Docker desktop which provides a very easy interface to see your containers, launch them and interact with them. Please watch my video Docker Desktop Decoded Simplifying Container Management to learn more about Docker Desktop and to know how to launch MySQL in Docker and connect it to our Spring Boot app, please watch my course Connecting Spring Boot with Database running inside a Docker container. I am connected to the MySQL instance. Typing Show Databases shows the MyDB database. Type Use MyDB. Type Show Tables and there are none now. Alright, going back to the project, let me go to Liquibase application. Click Run. And here we can see Liquibase ran one script, the v1-schema.sql script. Going back to MySQL, now typing show tables, we see a bunch of tables. Type select star from database change log. The database change log table is a core component of Liquibase, a database schema change management tool. Its primary purpose is to track which chain sets have already been executed on a given database. This ensures that each chain set representing a discrete database change is applied only once and in the correct order preventing duplicate or missing updates. Each time Liquibase runs, it checks the database change log table to determine which chain sets from the change log file have already been applied. It then only executes new unapplied chain sets. So here we can see our v1-schema.sql script and our chain set. The table includes additional columns such as execution date, order, checksum, description and context information which help with auditing and troubleshooting migrations. And as we saw, if the table does not exist, Liquibase automatically creates it when first run against a database. Let me type describe user and we see Liquibase executed the chain script to create this table. Alright, let me stop the project. Let's follow the life cycle of a change. So say I need to make a change to the user model object. I want to add a string column location. Let me right click, choose generate and then getters and setters. Now I will go to the db change log folder, right click, create the file first change.sql. Inside, again add the liquibase formatted sql as the first line. Next, let me add the chain set my change colon 2 for liquibase to recognize a new chain set and add the SQL to add the location column to the user table. Next, go to the db changelog master.yaml file and include this file also. Let's run the Liquibase application again. From the console, we can see Liquibase correctly identifies the new script to run, the v1-schema.sql script already run. Let me clear the console, type select star from database changelog again and here we see the second line for my change to for the first change.sql file. Type describe user and we can see the new column location in here. Cool. Now Liquibase can also help us identify what changes we made in our project by doing a diff against the database and generating a script to bring the two in sync. Let me add another column access level. Generate getters and setters for that. Similarly, I can make multiple changes to other model objects as a part of my change. Now, I do not need to keep track of these. Liquibase can help us with this. For that, we will need to add a plugin. Let me go to the pom.xml file and paste it here. Here we point it to the change log file dbchangelogmaster.yaml. Next, we tell it the location for the differential change log file to contain the changes with the div from the project and the database. We provide the info of our database and user. It requires a couple of dependencies which we are pasting here. Now, let me open up a terminal, paste the command maven clean install liquibase colon div hyphen d skip tests equal to true. It goes to work analyzing the differences and then produces the div file. Let's open the file and we see it correctly identified the change we made to add a column access level. 
Let me go to the DB change log master and paste this to include the file. Run the project. Liquibase correctly identifies one new run, two previously run, total chain sets three. Going to MySQL, describe user shows the new column here. Selecting star from database change log, we see our third chain set here and its info. So this is how Liquibase can help us with database chain sets and version control. Thanks for watching.